Welcome everybody to my last video in my series that talks about the central limit theorem, but you can tell that I've actually done a little bit more than that. Not only have I talked about the CLT, but I've also talked about the sum of sample times, and I've also talked about just normal Z-score calculations when the sample size is actually just one or an individual. At the end of this video, we'll kind of have a nice review of everything we've learned so far in this chapter and the previous one and how you would easily use your calculator to solve it. So for this problem we have, in the United States, someone gets a spam every two minutes on average. So here's our mu. Suppose that the standard deviation is 0.5 minutes and the sample size is 100. So here's our n and here is our standard deviation. Now the n is not going to change for the rest of the page. Find the median, the first quartile, and the third quartile, and the sample mean time. Now to find the median, we would use the inverse norm. Now I will show you just the straightforward way to do this problem, but also there's kind of a super fast way to find the median if you just think a little bit about normal curves. So again, if we were to think about where is the median, the median is at 0 0.50, so it's right in the middle here. Again, have you thought of the shortcut yet? And then we are going to look for our average here, and our average is 2 because that was given to us up here. Again, have you thought of maybe the, uh, <laughs> thought of the shortcut yet? All right, and this is going to be our standard deviation of 0.5 divided by the square root of our sample size which is the same thing as 0.5 cut divided by 10. But if I type all this into the calculator, you're going to see maybe an obvious answer. I don't know. Have you seen it yet? Okay, so let's try it in uh, second vars. Let's go to invert the norm. Let's type in our area, which is 0.5, which is halfway of a normal curve. And then I'm trying to help you here. This is the average of 2, and then we have 0.5. 5 divided by the square root of the sample size. I know that's just 10, but hey, just type it all in. We get an answer of 2. <laughs> because the median is the same thing as the average, right? It's the same thing as the average, because in a normal curve, the mean, median, and mode are all the same, because it's peaked at the middle. So yeah, okay, two is our two is going to be our, our median. Now let's do the first quartile. So this is the Q1. And the Q1 is going to be the inverse norm. 0.25, comma two, comma 0.5 divided by square root of a hundred. Alright, and then you can kind of see that point that the Q3 is going to be the inverse norm at 0.75 comma 2 comma 0.5 divided by a square root of 100. So I can just bring the calculator up and do these two uh, answers right away to see what would be the 25th percentile for your spam times and your 75th percentile for your spam times. So let's go um, second vars, move down to inverse norm. So we're going to change our area to 0.25. Now everything else stays the same. So I click through my enters and hit enter one more time. And that gives me 1.97. 1.97, that's not an average, that is a, or sorry, that's not a percentage, that is the number of minutes. 1.97 minutes, I will have to wait till it gets to my next spam if I'm on the 25th percentile. Now check this out, I can click second and the enter button and get this entire equation back and just push my arrow key up change that to a 7 instead of a 2 and hit enter and there's my third quartile score and so I now have those at 1.97 and 2.03 and so yeah I'll just put this down here 1.97 is my number of minutes at 20 the 25th percentile and 2.03 is the number of minutes at the 75th percentile now for a little review of what we learned in the last video, we're going to have our sum of the sample times. And the sum of the sample times, I did that in red here. So this changes things a little bit for our Q1 and Q3. And let's go change the color here. So our Q1, oops, here we go. Q1 is going to be equal to the inverse norm 
but um, I want to show you the format of this here. Of course, the first thing is going to be our percent, um, and we're going to write that as a decimal. Then we're going to have n times mu, and then we're going to have, instead of the um, standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, this is going to be the standard deviation multiplied by the square root of the sample size. So this is going to give us our Q1, so we're going to have our 0.25, and this is going to be our um, n, which is 100, times mu, which is 2, and this is going to be our standard deviation, which is 0.5, multiplied by the square root of 100. Okay, so that's going to be our Q1. All right, so I can just put this in here. And our Q3 is going to be just changing that first number to inverse norm, changing it to 0.75. And then you can see that this would be 200 right there. And 0.5 times 10 is just 5. So um, I can easily get this done by going back to the calculator and seeing that some of this work is already done for me. But I'm going to go second bars. I'm going to move down to inverse norm. And let's type in, I got my 0.25 all set up. This is 200 because that's 100 times 2. And this is just going to be 5. So I click paste and this is going to be my sum of all the spam times right there added together to 196.6 minutes. So 196.6 minutes would be the sum of all the spam times there at the Q1. And at the Q3, let's take it back here, I can then just go second enter and get that all back and change that to 0 0.75. Of course, I could go through all the menus, but this is a little faster. 203.3. All right. 203.3. Okay, now let's see if you can pick out this problem's little twist. Suppose the probability, pr find the probability that you, you get a spam email on average between 1.75 and 1.85 minutes. Well, notice this problem is just asking about you. So this is the probability that you will be between 1.75 which is just x, not x bar, just x, and 1.85. So in this case, this is going to be belonging to the normal curve with 2 minute average and 0.5 divided by the square root of 1, because it's just you, standard deviation. So this is just the normal z-score. So here you have your normal PDF, or sorry, CDF, not PDF, wrong function. And this is going to be 1.75 to 1.85, and it's going to be 2 and 0.5, and that's going to give you the percent chance that you're going to be um, on the lower, like the, the faster end of, of receiving a spam email. So you will be getting more spam emails here because your times are, are shorter. So let us go look at our calculator. So let's go to second bars, normal CDF. And we're going to go from 1.75 to 1.85. Our average is 2. Standard deviation is 0.5. And that will give you only a 7.3, excuse me, 7.4% chance. So 0.074. Therefore, um, you have a 7.4% chance of your time being between 1.75, which is less than you, which is going to be less than 1.85. Now, if we were to basically, instead of going with you and went with a sample of 100 people, then what you would, the only thing that you would change is you would change this standard deviation here to 0.5 divided by the square root of 100. Everything else would stay the same. And it would be a lot less likely just because your 
your group is going to be more centered around the actual average of two minutes and not a one-off at between 1.75 and 1.85. All right, now it says here, find the standard, this is, this is a real kind of brain pusher kind of problem here. It says, find the value that is two standard deviations above the sample mean. Okay, so first of all, let's kind of like break down this problem if we were just talking about it with one person, okay? So this isn't the answer to the problem. This is still green because we're talking about one person. Because if we were at two, then, and the average or the standard deviation was 0.5, right? So this is um, a normal standard deviation distance here of 0.5. Then this would be 2.5 and then two standard deviations above the norm would be at three. So that is the answer for if we just had, you know, x equals one person, or in this case, n equals one person. So this goes back to just you thinking about your data, n equals one. But when we have n equals 100 people, okay, so if n equals 100 people, uh, that means that our standard deviation of that group is going to be using the central limit theorem. And we are going to have to use the standard error of the mean. So we're going to take our standard deviation, which is 0.5, and divide it by the square root of 100. And luckily that was pretty easy to compute because this is 0.5 divided by 10. And 0.5 divided by 10 is going to be um, our answer of 0.05. So this means our, what we've done from this moment on here is going to be inside of this skinnier, if you can believe it, it's a skinnier bell curve. And it's skinnier because you can still see that it drops at two, but two standard deviations above the norm, instead of this being 0.5, it's 0.05. And this is another 0.05, so this stick right here isn't at three. It didn't go to... 2.53, it went to 2.05, 2.1. So your answer is, for this problem, 2.1, because it's a sample mean that talks about our n equals 100. So that was a little bit of a brain buster to see if you could put all of these back in the problem here. But to finish out this whole series that we've been really kind of like packing this all in for you here, we are going to talk about our um, types of problems. So we have individual. We've had group. And we've also had sum of sample. Now, how would you see individuals stated in the group? Well, you would say, you know, like the word you, or it would say, you know, a person, a group. Um, they would definitely talk about the sample mean. So you'd see the word sample would then indicate that's what we're talking about here. And then the sum of sample, you definitely would see the sum or a total. These are words that would get you to realize, oh, okay, this is, this is what I'm talking about here. So my target here is just going to be x, whereas in the sample mean we have x bar, and the sum of sample, I'm throwing in the little sigma there. Again, it's not the most accurate thing, but it kind of distinguishes the three different types of problems. Now, for my average, we're going to use what was given in the problem, mu. And my standard deviation is going to be what was given in the problem, standard deviation. Now, for x bar, we're going to use mu, which happens to be the same thing as the mu of my sample group. But my standard deviation is going to have to be divided by the sample size here. Now, in the final part here, my sum is not going to be mu. It's going to be n times mu. Because if we're looking at the sum of all of our averages, we have to take our average and then multiply by our sample size. But instead of this standard deviation divided by the square root of n, it's going to be multiplied by the square root of n. And this little chart is really nice to have in front of you if you're doing these kind of problems and they're changing them up quite a bit.
Well, thank you so much for doing the work, and I appreciate you sticking through all six videos in my series on the central limit theorem. Hope you found them useful and you got a lot of sample story problems and sample and homework problems here. So even though this did take a while to write down, you hopefully will have a model for any kind of story problem that I throw at you. All right, well, thank you very much, and I appreciate you watching.